Well, here we are on the Gardener's Corner program, a Friday feature here on TV Channel 10 on Charter Communications Channel 191 and WKRX 96.7 FM. My name is Rob Hall. We welcome you into the Gardener's Corner program. We're brought to you today by Red, White, and Bluegrass Festival in Morganton. That'll be coming up July 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Also brought to you today by Sandling Golf Cars, T.G. Brooks Company, South Boston Memorials, and Owl Pride Foods, makers of Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip. Please make welcome all the way from the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service, the big kahuna himself, Mr. Call. He's ready to rumble. <laughs> Cantaloupe. <laughs> I am ready to rumble. I need to, <laughs> need to take a Tums. <laughs> a good morning to you, my friend. <laughs> good morning, Rob. Glad to have you here with us. You and, bet. And Carl is our resident expert of sorts, and uh, we appreciate him loaning his knowledge to us here for the Gardener's Corner program. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, insects, diseases, and things like that. Uh, if you've got a question for call, we are live uh, in the studio right now. And uh, you can give us a call, 336-599-0266. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, we're going to jump right in. And All I've right. got a question. All right, uh, shoot. I had someone to uh, call me a few days ago and ask a question and as I always do, I said, I'm going to uh, ask Carl mm -hmm. to get you a proper answer. Well, th what the question was, uh, the, the right-of-way power line people have came through and done some trimming of trees away from the power, you know, cutting it away from the power lines. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, these folks, when they come through and do their jobs, they only cut what they feel need to be, you know, removed, right, right. you know, of damaging the power lines and et cetera. Well, this person uh, was telling me that they had some trees where it had been trimmed, you know, by the power companies, and they would like to go ahead and shape them up to make them a little bit more attractive and they are maple trees mm -hmm. uh, and I told them that typically ideal pruning times was late February first part of March uh, and and I've been told that maple trees will sometimes bleed yeah. if you trim them at the wrong time of the year mm -hmm. but they want to know would it be harmful and detrimental to the trees. How do you like the way I threw that word in there, Carl? Very good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> if they were to go ahead and shape the tree up a little bit to kind of match up the pruning work that the power company has done, uh, what is your feelings on them doing that at this time? Um, I, I suppose they could. They could. I wonder if the sap was if the sap was dripping uh, now, or if you know if they noticed that. You know, after right. they after they they prune, yeah. The the if the sap drips, it, it attracts insects. Um, but um, I don't know if it just j light general pruning uh, probably wouldn't hurt. You know, at this time, the sap will run probably, and then it'll 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 stop eventually. Of course, and the ideal time is of course is mid to late December. Um, oh, so that is for for maples, for elms, birches, and maples. Okay. Yeah, as one of the they're one of the bleeders, as we as we call them. Yeah. Well, mark it down. I was wrong with the February March reply. Mm. So, but you know, when I told him that, I I thought to myself, well, I know it's some trees that call suggest December. Yeah. But now, Carl, with the sap, if if they do prune these maple trees. And, and, and the sap runs, that will, you know, attract some insects and things. But with the sap running, is, is that very harmful to the tree itself? That in itself, no, it's, it's, it's not. It's okay. just, uh, it attracts other insects, you know, especially if the, um, that sap starts to uh, ferment. It attracts uh, 
insects and they might have a problem with that. So if at all possible, it's it's probably best for them to wait in uh, you know until December to, to do to do a lot of pruning. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Uh, I hope that we we kind of got the question answered that uh, was asked of me several days ago. But uh, we are uh, going to be talking about a lot of different things today, a lot of useful information that hopefully you can um, take and, and, and use it. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl, something um, we had planned to talk about last week uh, and did not get around to it, but uh, you've got some updated information on the Person County Farmer's Market. Right. Um, mm -hmm. They are open on Wednesday afternoons, 3 until 6, Saturday mornings from 8 until 12 noon. And um, Carl has a list of some of the things that will be available tomorrow morning. Right. We'll have uh, rainbow, Swiss chard, kale, bagged lettuce, snap peas, uh, chicken eggs, um, also um, herbal health and body care products, um, honey, and then all, all different kinds of, of cookies, uh, uh, cakes, pastries, uh, available at the market, the farmers market, and along with uh, chicken eggs, we'll also have some duck eggs, uh, snow peas, summer crisp lettuce, turnips, goat meat, um, baby carrots, gourmet lettuce, kale, Swiss chard. So those are those are some of the products that'll be available at the market on Saturday. Now, Carl, what is gourmet lettuce? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I guess uh, probably uh, maybe maybe small head lettuces uh, that you know are harvested all at one time. I'm guessing that's okay. what it might be. So it probably isn't like uh, I know we've got the um, iceberg lettuce and then we have the romaine lettuce. Mm -hmm. the, is the gourmet lettuce just the name that they're using? You I, think? It probably yeah. Okay. It, it could it could it could be anything really. Uh, I'll have the know. Caesar salad with the gourmet lettuce, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't care if it's fifty cents extra or not. I want the gourmet lettuce. <laughs> but anyway, if you have the opportunity to stop by the Person County Farmers Market again Wednesday afternoons three until six, Saturday mornings eight a.m. until twelve noon. Now, uh, you know, they have the Roxborough Farmer's Market. Not sure of what schedule they have thus far, but I'm sure they will be open uh, six days a week before you know it because, you know, in a month or so, a lot of the vegetables and everything will be coming in. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking mm -hmm. of that, Carl, yeah. uh, is it still plenty of time to plant warm season vegetables? Oh, sure, sure. They'll, they'll just mature a little bit later, but still plenty of time to plant your warm season vegetables. Absolutely. Okay. Um, now, Carl, uh, I want you to uh, clarify something to me. Okay. I heard someone was talking about watering tomatoes mm -hmm. and they said that they preferred to water their tomatoes in the hot part of the day and their reason for this is uh, and and they're using a sprinkler system to water the tomatoes uh, okay okay um, that you know if you water uh, late in the afternoon or real early in the morning that with the foliage and everything on the tomato plants, it gives them a better chance for a fungi to grow, to get a fungus. And they were saying that if they water in the heat part of the day, that when they stop watering, you know, by later that afternoon, the plants and everything would be dried off. Mm -hmm. Is this correct or not? Uh, not not exactly, because uh, if you water overhead in the morning, it's true that the, the leaf surfaces are going to remain wet or longer, but by, you know, midday, um, they, they'll be dry. The, the, the time not to water uh, vegetables overhead would be in late afternoon, so you have a, um, an incubation period for, uh, for the fungi to grow, especially at night. So if you want to water overhead, uh, you know, that's, that's fine. Um, watering during the heat of the day will not burn the plants. That's a, that's a myth. But you'll lose more water to evaporation if you, if you water during the, you know, the, 
the heat of the day. Okay. And, and remember, it's really not necessary to sprinkle the plants at all with water because then you're just washing off insecticides and fungicides, so you're, you're actually defeating your purpose. Uh, if you if you water with a sprinkler, so it's it's much better to water with a garden hose. Take the nozzle off, let the water run down at the base of the plant down the row, and so all the water is going to be uh, utilized by the the plants. And uh, you know the the idea is not to to turn that hose on and let it rush out there out the hose as fast as you can, because then you blow soil around. Uh, and uh, you, what you want to concentrate on is a good slow watering of uh, of the vegetables, and and that takes more time, you know, admittedly. And a lot of people don't want to spend the time it takes to do something right. Right. Um, but a soca hose would work. A soca hose would would work would work great as as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, Carl, uh, uh, we're not necessarily going to do a pitch for this name brand, but. You know, with, with a lot of the garden starting to grow, um, it's going to be deer and other wildlife mm -hmm. that will maybe start invading your garden. That's right. And uh, you had told me about something a few years back, and uh, I had uh, some kin people to buy one of these scarecrows. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, pretty much what it is, it's a motion activated sprinkler yeah, that's right and it has batteries in it and you set it up in your garden and you run a water hose to it and you leave the water turned on so when something walks in front of it whether it's wildlife or yourself <laughs> it will begin to spray water that's right to deter uh you know wildlife mm -hmm. uh, also you have spoke of Liquid fence. Liquid fence. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm hmm And it uh, is something that you spray around the garden, and it, it puts off a, a more or less a pungent odor. Oh, something yes. Something like rotten eggs it, or something it, it like is, that. It is. Uh, 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 putrefied egg uh, egg yolks or, or egg whites, and uh, it, it does smell. So if you can get past the smell, uh, it stays, it sticks on the plants uh, for a long time. And it, it does work against the the, uh, the deer. I, I've I've tried it. Also, I I know that you know some people have actually used eggs, mm -hmm. you know, and and dilute them in water and spray around, and you know you can do that. But you know it's been on the news as of recently about the prices of eggs going up. But uh, you can get some of this uh, liquid fence at many different garden retailers and uh it may be something depending on how much rain we get or how much you irrigate your garden as to how often you want to spray but uh it's a lot of little things that you can go ahead and start to try to um prevent problems from happening and a right. lot of times it's easier to do that than waiting until the problem you know, it's there. And that leads up to the, the, uh, the first topic that we'll talk about, doing something preventively before you see damage, and that is the, uh, the familiar um, bagworm, uh, bagworms that affect evergreen plants, Leland, Cypress, Junipers, etc. cetera. And um, uh, these, these are the true bagworms. A lot of people call bagworms eastern tent caterpillars, the ones that make bags in, in, in ornamental trees, uh, trees that lose their leaves. So, so they're not bagworms, they're eastern tent caterpillars. These are the true bagworms that uh, make the bags out of the, uh, the needles of the branches, and this is what, what they look like. Here's one close up. This is a full-grown uh, bagworm in its protective bag. So what happens this time of the year, the male bagworm emerges uh, from the pupal stage and it flies off to mate. The females actually stay in the bag. They never leave the bag. Uh, the males uh, come in, uh, fertilize the females, and then they fly off and the, the females uh, uh, lay, lay a, a whole bunch of eggs. So what happens then is the, the larvae uh, after the eggs hatch, the larvae float on a strand of silk and attach, uh, attach it to, uh, to a plant. And this is the stage that you want to control the bagworms with. Uh, 
You can see the larvae here. It has a black head, and then it's already making uh, the bag out of the, the needles. So you want to have a, a fully exposed or as much exposed as you can larvae so that when you treat with insecticides, 7, malathion, Bt, whatever you happen to have, it will kill the larvae before they start to make the, uh, the mature bag. Once the bags are made, then uh, in, no insecticides will work. So that means we have to go out and, and carefully scout your evergreen plants for, uh, for ba the bagworm larvae. And they're going to be, uh, they, they will camouflage themselves very well up against the needles. And so you have to really look uh, hard to, to, to find them. But if you're patient, you can, you can just stand there and it almost looks like the branch starts to move. And that's, you know, you'll see the larvae then. Well, now, Carl, when you say evergreen, you're talking about... Uh, Leland cypress, uh, juniper, uh, arborvitae, those plants. Okay. Uh, and, and when you find it, you just kind of clip the bag out of there? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's when they're mature. You know, ev once they make the mature bag, yeah, you have to clip them off because there's no way an insecticide will penetrate. So now's the time to control them with insecticides. Most people don't because they don't see the bags. Right. So that's why you have to go and scout and look for the insects. Otherwise, uh, I mean, uh, there can be as many as 500 to 800 eggs in one bag. So if you, wow. if you miss clipping the bags out, you'll have, you'll have a bunch for reinfestation. So, so now the, the thing to do is just to spray to control these exposed larvae before they, they encase themselves in the bag. And so that's the, that's the best way to control. Okay. Carl, um, it seems to me when you just mentioned Leland Cypress, it made me think about, it seems that you had told me one time, that the reason that a lot of the Leland Cypress trees die after they get really big mm -hmm. is due to the lack of water that it takes a lot of water to keep them alive is that correct a lot of water and and fertilizer to sustain that uh, that rapid rate of growth that they have that's okay. right mm -hmm. well look uh, let's get a word on for uh, one of our many five supporting sponsors of the gardener's corner program today uh we're going to take a trip to morganton north carolina uh to the red white and bluegrass festival that's going to be coming up July 1st through July the 4th. And they've got a uh, money-saving deal on tickets if you purchase them before Wednesday, June 10th. Here's some more information on the Red, White, and Bluegrass Festival. Get your advance tickets now for the 12th Annual Red, White, and Bluegrass Festival July 1st through 4th at Catawba Meadows Park in Morganton. Buy tickets by June 10th and save $15 off the regular three-day pass prices. You'll hear bluegrass artists like Balsam Range, Seldom Seen, Del McCurry Band, and Mountain Heart. Purchase discount tickets until June 10th at Kama. Call 800-939-SHOW or online at redwhiteandbluegrassfestival.com. Enjoy four days of real American music in Morganton July 1st through four. Save $15 on your advance tickets. Log on to Red, White, and Bluegrass Festival.com before Wednesday, June 10th to save on tickets. The Red, White, and Bluegrass Festival in Morganton, North Carolina, July 1st through July 4th. That's Red, White, and Bluegrass Festival.com. Here we are back on the Gardener's Corner program with Carl Cantalupi our resident expert from the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service who divides his time between Person and Granville counties. Uh, we appreciate him being here. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl, uh, continuing on uh, talking about um, other things that you need to kind of be aware of, of the growing season. Mm -hmm. With um, uh, Let's talk about the lawn just a minute. The here what? it is, the lawn, oh. the yard. Uh, if you have uh, the Bermuda grasses, it's time to be fertilizing, correct? Right. Fertilize, uh, fertilizing Bermuda grass lawns can be done now. Uh, about one pound of actual nitrogen per 1,000 square feet. So you take the first number in the fertilizer bag, divide that into 100. So if you're using a, uh, just a 10-10-10 uh, a fertilizer, 
uh, 10 into 100 goes 10 times. So that means you apply 10 pounds of that 10, 10, 10 fertilizer per 1,000 square feet. That equals one pound of actual nitrogen. So, uh, you know, do it now. Then again in uh, July and August, so you fertilize Bermuda grass during the, uh, the active periods of growth because they're a warm season grass. That's right. And Carl is a fan of the Bermuda grass because it, it holds up well during, during the summer months and things. That's right. Uh, if you have uh, cool season grasses, which is uh, bluegrass or, or fescue, uh, fescue it's not a good time to uh, fertilize your lawns. You need to go ahead and get your soil samples and do it in the fall time of the year, maybe starting as early as September, and uh, that will allow time enough for the uh, fertilizer to get, air, get down into the root system mm -hmm. to hopefully you'll have a uh, nice, beautiful lawn come the following springtime. That's right. That's right. So, again, uh, turnaround time for soil sampling right now is a couple of weeks. About two weeks, yeah. So this is a free service for North Carolina residents thanks to the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. And if you'd like more information on how to do soil sampling, if you just call your local Cooperative Extension Service office, they will be glad to explain how simple and easy it is to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay, getting on to some current things here. Uh, if we have eggplants in the garden, I've already seen uh, damage due to flea beetles and uh, they're very small, black, quick uh, jumping insects that can... Uh, make holes in the leaves and if they get se severe they can uh, they can do a lot of damage uh, so uh, if you if you have flea beetles uh, any uh, stomach poison insecticide like seven uh, should do very well here's what they look like in relation in size to a penny um, so they they can attack eggplants also uh, tomatoes too they can they can also uh, get on so those are some uh, some pictures of um, of those. Carl, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> on the picture scene, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about it. Uh, one of the uh, photographs that you show sometimes kind of, you know, really really freaks me out a little bit. Is the one that has the uh, the squash bugs and everything on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's what to, we're get, yeah we're, to, get, we're to, getting to those to where it's <laughs> just really infested, you know. Uh huh. And uh, so, I, I guarantee you, Carl, if 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 you could like uh, take some of these pictures and and post them in your garden and things, mm -hmm. Most you know. Wanted. Most wanted. <laughs> yeah, and you kind of look at that picture and you'd say, I'm going to make sure that them little devils don't show up this year. You'd be spraying ahead of time to, to, to ensure that they're, they're not there. That's right. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, one of these that you probably won't see during the day is the squash vine borer adult, as we see here on the, on the screen. Um, they're um, large moths, but they, they, they generally... Uh, uh, work in the garden uh, at night. They're nocturnal. So you very rarely see the adults during the day. But that's what the adults look like uh, of squash vine borer. And of course, this is the damage that they do. The, uh, the eggs are laid, they bore into the stem, and they can cause complete uh, collapse of the, uh, of the vegetables. So uh, right now, the first, uh, during the first week of June, actually is when the first generation of squash vine borers will come out. So now's the time to go ahead and uh, uh, get an insecticide, you know, liquid seven, spraying at the base of the plant, or any other pyrethrin uh, or synthetic pyrethroid insecticide that's labeled for use in vine crops. That will also work well. The idea is that you have to um, coat the, uh, the stem with the, with the insecticide so that when the egg is laid, uh, it's going to be killed before it bores inside the plant. So actually, if you, if you set yourself up on a spray schedule to spray once every two weeks with uh, either seven or a, a pyrethroid insecticide, you'll pretty much uh, be in the clear as far as uh, not getting squash vine borer. 
But if you wait until damage happens, of course, then it's then it's too late. And they can take out squash plants overnight sometimes, mm -hmm. it seems. That's right. You sure can. Um, Carl, uh, are you at a good spot to where we could get a word yeah, we on can. Sure. For, uh -huh. for Sandling Golf Cars? Mm -hmm. uh, and, we, and we'll be back to continue on. But right now... We'll take a trip down to Oxford and stop in at Sandling Golf Cars, located 613 Lewis Street in Oxford. They're open for business weekdays, 8 until 5.30, Saturdays, 9 until 1. So we'll take a trip to Sandling Golf Cars. Are you in need of a trailer? Sandling Golf Cars has master tow utility trailers and tow dollies. Dump trailers and equipment trailers up to 32 foot that can handle 20,000 pounds by load trail. You can also get Calico stock trailers and Pace enclosed trailers up to 24 foot at Sandling Golf Cars. So if you have something to haul, most likely you can find the trailer you need at Sandling Golf Cars. Some trailer payments start as low as $100 per month. See Al, Hillary, or Will for all of your trailer needs. Call Sandling Golf Cars at 919-693-4626 or toll free 1-800-221-9267 or log on to sandlinggolfcars.com. Or better yet, stop in and see the friendly folks in Oxford just off the bypass at Sandling Golf Cars. Open weekdays 8 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. Call 919-693-4626 or toll free 1-800-221-9267. Sandling Golf Cars is a Trojan battery dealer and they also have a full line of club car and easy-go golf cars, parts, and they also offer repair service on just about any brand of golf car. It's grilling season, and you would enjoy grilling out on a Wilmington Grill from Sandling Golf Cars, 613 Lewis Street in Oxford. Here we are back on the Gardner's Corner Program. Appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, talking about different insects and things like that that uh, you need to be aware of that can cause harm to your vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue on with that right now. And the next insect that's, uh, we, we talked about squash vine borer, and of course this insect is the squash bug. The squash bug lays maroon colored eggs, either on the upper or the lower uh, leaf surface, and they, la they lay them in clusters, as you see here in this picture. Uh, here's another one uh, close up. And uh, they're very easily controlled uh, just by uh, taking your, uh, your, your, your finger and your thumb and forefinger and just squashing them. Uh, that's a good way of uh, uh, what we call mechanical control. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's one way. And if you keep up with it, if, you, if you're out there in the garden, which you should be every day watching, uh, you, can, you can do a good job in eliminating these, these eggs. But once the eggs hatch, uh, this is in the immature stage or the, or the uh, nymphal stage of the insect. At this stage, they can be pretty easily controlled with an insecticide such as malathion. Um, here's, a, here's a shot of, uh, of the damage that they can do on leaves. But when they get to the adult size, as you see in this slide, it's very difficult to control them with any insecticides. And this next photograph coming up is the one that I was speaking of. Wow. Here you have all life cycle <clears throat> stages of the insect. Uh, egg larvae, uh, 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 or I should say egg immature and, and adult. So uh, if a leaf gets this bad, there's, there's really not much you can do. So uh, constant vigil is the, is the price that we have to pay, and uh, we really need to set ourselves up on a on a spray schedule uh so that we can keep ahead of some some of these insects because uh, they can they can do a lot of damage they they most certainly can uh, and 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 as carl said you know um that when, when they make it to the mature stage it's pretty much too late so to speak so right uh, to use the analogy an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Right. Correct, Mr. Cantalupi? That's right. Absolutely. Uh, but, yes, by all means, um, the next time you're at your local 
uh, gardening center. Uh, maybe just ask about, you know, uh, what kind of pesticides do you have that that I could get to spray some of the different, you know, vegetable garden plants that I have. And uh, go ahead and have them on hand. And, and if you got your little garden spray, all you need is a little bit of time to uh, mm -hmm. con continue on and, and, and do the spraying. Right. So, uh, anyway, um, Carl, on another note, as far as squash and everything goes, mm -hmm. no matter what kind of squash that you have, whether it's a patty pan, the yellow neck, the crooked neck, uh, the list goes on. Uh, if it's squash, the squash bugs enjoy it. They correct? prefer they prefer squash, yeah, as compared to uh, to cucumber, yeah. Okay, but so uh, and I guess that's why they call it the squash bug. That's right. Mm -hmm. But it is possible to have squash bugs on your cucumber. Yeah, oh, definitely, sure. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Next um, topic at hand. Brown rot of peaches. <laughs> this is one that kind of sneaks up on people uh, behind their backs until it's too late. Uh, brown rot is a fungus that affects peaches. It gets its start during the uh, during, it affects the blossom, and then we'll move on to the fruit, but not until the fruit is almost at the full ri uh, full ripened ripened stage. Uh, you can have a tree that's loaded full of peaches uh, one day, and then the next day you get up, and then you see all these uh, shriveled up fruits uh, in the trees, these brown fruits shriveled up into mummies. So now's the time to add the, the uh, fungicide Captan, C-A-P-T-A-N, to your fruit spray mixture. And, and a lot of the um, home orchard sprays that you buy contain two insecticides, plus the captan for, for brown rot control. So, so you need to get those sprays on uh, probably once every 10 days or so because as that fruit enlarges in size, it increases in surface area so that you, keep, you, uh, you need to keep uh, applying the fungicide to that uh, rapidly expanding fruit. Well, Carl, uh, let me interrupt just a second. Uh -huh. When you spray the fungicide, do you recommend a sprayer sticker? Yeah, that would be good. Mm -hmm. That will help, sure. Mm -hmm. And and that will just make it stay on a little bit better on, on, on the leaves and everything should we, you know, have rain. Now, if we have a lot of rain, you know, you may want to increase your spray schedule. But right. uh, spray stickers is, you know, something that um, it's water-soluble that you just mix in and, and it works pretty well. Now you don't you do not need a spray sticker when spraying Roundup, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry to interrupt. The, uh, just to no, you. that's a, that's that's a good point, Rob. Um, yeah, the brown rot fungus will not attack the peach until the sugars increase and the pH increases in the fruit. Uh, so uh, when the conditions are right, the fungus will move in. So that's why you have to have the uh, the fungicide present on that fruit so that it doesn't take you by surprise. But that's that's brown rot of peach, uh, controlled with uh, with captan fungicide. And, and 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 to reiterate what you said, a lot of times captan is already in the fungicide spray. Right. And the captan is what takes care of the brown rot. Mm -hmm. So when purchasing, take a few minutes to read the label or ask. One one of the uh, people in the know at these places, and uh, mm -hmm. they can, you know, or you tell them what you're wanting, and they can probably put you right on it. So, uh, right. Anyway, continuing on, um, Carl. As far as tomatoes go, right now, uh, is it anything that people need to be aware of or be watching for with the tomatoes? Uh, yes, actually, with the rains, the recent rains that uh, we've had, it won't be too long until we start to see uh, fungus diseases on tomatoes start to show up. Of course, this is the uh, very familiar early blight fungus that uh, uh, has target board or, or um, uh, target board or bullseye spots on the leaves, and uh, they're re they're round and they have the fungus spores contained inside. Here's another uh, shot of. Um, uh, early blight. Then we have septoria leaf spot, which are smaller spots that kind of come together. Uh, here's another one, another shot of septoria. Uh, both of these fungi can be controlled with timely applications of fungicide. You can use the daconil, D-A-C-O-N-I-L, 
and you can also use uh, Maneb, M-A-N-E-B. And you might want to alternate these fungicides every time you spray. In other words, one week you might spray with Daconil, the second week uh, with Maneb. And, and the idea is to keep the leaves uh, clean so that the fungi does not get, uh, the fungus spore is not able to get on the leaf, germinate, and grow inside the leaf. Once that happens, um, fungicides are no longer effective. So uh, the best thing to do if you have some affected leaves, uh, pull off those leaves and, uh, and throw them away and then uh, spray on a regular basis so that um, when the fungus spore lands on the leaf, it gets killed and does not get a chance to, uh, to penetrate the, uh, the leaf tissue. Now, Carl, if it's someone that maybe only has three or four uh, tomato plants, it doesn't take a great deal of spray right. to, to do this. So they could actually get just a little hand spray, and when I say like that, like an old Windex bottle or something. Well, you could, but, but uh, remember, as that plant gets bigger, uh, be a lot more it, area it's a lot cover. more area to cover. So okay. actually, the, 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 the higher, you know, if you have a three-gallon pump-up tank sprayer, that's going to deliver a lot more pressure. Right. And pressure, high pressure is very important when you're trying to protect leaf surfaces uh, with fungicides, especially when, the, when you have a very dense plant canopy and leaves are touching each other. So, okay. so your, 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 th your three-gallon pump-up tank sprayer is a really good investment. Of course, if you want to do a real good job, you can get a, a motorized uh, backpack sprayer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that'll really blow the leaves around <laughs> well. But if you have other things in the garden, uh, like uh, some grapes, once, once grape leaves uh, come out, and now is really the time uh, to, to protect uh, your, your, uh, your grapes against the black rot fungus. And uh, you can protect them with bla uh, from black rot and also powdery mildew by spraying with the Immunox fungicide, I-M-M-U-N-O-X. And uh, we've, we've got excellent weather. I've seen the spots on the, uh, on the grape leaves already. Um, the, uh, that produces the, uh, the black rot spores, which moves from the leaves onto the fruit. So you've, you definitely want to stay ahead of the game, and the time to spray is now with Immunox to control black rot of, of grapes. And if you have a, a high-pressure sprayer, that really makes application easy. You don't have to, uh, uh, you know, really uh, pump up a, a sprayer by hand. If you have a motorized sprayer, it really blows those leaves around and gives you good coverage. All right. Some useful information right there for you. We're going to take a trip to Timberlake, and we're stopping at T.G. Brooks Company. They've been in business since 1936. Stop in and see them. They've got all kind of things around there that uh, you would enjoy having around your home. Uh, beautiful flowers, vegetable garden plants. And you know what will be good to have around the home this weekend? Some of those hand-cut ribeyes from T.G. Brooks Company. So glad it's May and see the beautiful weather here in Person County. And May is full-time lawn and garden season, the time to have fun and beautify. T.G. Brooks Company has your plants, too. Tomato plants, lots and lots of them at T.G. Brooks. Squash, cucumber, okra, cantaloupe, watermelon, lettuce, pepper, all kinds of pepper, eggplant, cabbage, broccoli, and... Also, your herbs like basil, chives, thyme, oregano, dill, cilantro, peppermint. They have lavender. They have your garden flowers. Some are vinca, aster, marigold, celosia, petunia, zinnia, salvia, petunias, silver dust, violets, marigolds. Get your fresh garden seed to plant and fresh grass seed and fertilizer and lime for your lawn. If you need mulch, Man, do they have the mulch, even the triple ground mulch. Do you need straw, pine needles? How about potting soil, planting soil, or cow manure? They have spreaders. They have aerators for sale or rent. T.G. Brooks serves the homeowner and the commercial landscaper. T.G. Brooks Company handles everybody with the same courteous service. They can arrange delivery or you can pull in with your pickup truck, trailer. They'll load it up for you. The bagged products, they will load up in your car or van. It's exciting for May and May to be here in the full-time growing season. 
When the day is done, nothing will top it off like a hand-cut ribeye steak cooked to your liking and your family's satisfaction. Join the crowds rushing to 411 Helena Mariah Road in Timberlake. Phone them at 364-2428. T.G. Brooks proudly has served the homeowner, farmer, and those in construction since way back in 1936. They welcome people from all over Person County in Rougemont, Northern Durham, and of course all of Southern Person County. Here we are back on the Gardens Corner program. I appreciate you all tuning in. We're going to get a word on in just a few minutes for South Boston Memorials and Owl Pride Foods, makers of Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip. Um, Carl, as far as the garden goes, mm -hmm. um, is it any kind of, of, of vegetables or anything that you could kind of plant in your garden? that you may not necessarily be particularly fond of, but as an insect deterrent? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, 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 plants that uh, repel insects. Um, well, they have different kinds of geraniums, scented geraniums, uh, that supposedly are good to uh, ward off mosquitoes. You know, um, some people use them as, uh, as mosquito repellents. Um, and of course, there uh, uh, some people will plant marigolds around their tomatoes to uh, to discourage uh, spider mites on the tomatoes. Well, that's good up to a point because uh, the spider mites will go to the marigolds, but right as as soon as they get their fill of marigold juice, they're on the tomatoes. So uh, it, that <laughs> that doesn't always work. Um, but uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, in your garden, um, when you plant a different, uh, kind of mix up your planting, um, uh, in, instead of planting a, a row of tomatoes, you might want to uh, plant a few tomatoes and then mix it up, uh, uh, plant some vine crops. So you don't plant long rows of the same crop so, right. that, uh, so that if an insect gets established, it, you know, has a heyday. And uh, and can do more damage. So so those kinds of things uh, will help. Um, I've heard of other people planting what's called a trap crop. That is, you plant a uh, a vegetable that where you want the insects to come to, and put that at the border of the garden. And so uh, the insects will will feed on that pl on on the plants on the border and and won't go into the garden. You know that uh, that that could work as well. Okay. All righty, we're going to get a word on for South Boston Memorials, and uh, we'll be back with more of the Gardener's Corner program coming up after we take a trip to South Boston. South Boston Memorials, located 1439 Seymour Drive in South Boston, Virginia, they offer granite markers, monuments, and mausoleums. For more information, visit the website SoboMemorials.com or call 434-572-3859. South Boston Memorials have been in business and family-owned since 1958. In-house laser etching is available at South Boston Memorials. They have over 300 granite memorials in stock. For all of your granite markers, monuments, and mausoleums, stop in and see them right there at South South Boston Memorials, located 1439 Seymour Drive in South Boston, Virginia, or call them at 434-572-3859 and visit the website SoboMemorials.com. That's South Boston Memorials, located 1439 Seymour Drive in South Boston. Here we are back on the Gardener's Corner program. We appreciate you all tuning in. And I was going to make uh, a, a reference uh, a little while ago uh, when Carl was putting up some pictures uh, on, on the TV screen. Of course, we are very aware that you folks listening on the radio can't see those slides. <laughs> but at your leisure sometimes, log on to RadioRoxburgh.com to see past editions of the Gardener's Corner program. Carl has a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean a bunch <laughs> of visual slides to keep, get the, you know, more or less uh, idea instilled a little bit more. So log on sometimes to RadioRoxburgh.com 
to check out past editions of the Gardener's Corner program. Okay. All right, Carl, which way you want to head now? All right. We actually have a pest that is going to uh, start making its presence, presence known for people that have the euonymus shrub in the, in the landscape. And euonymus uh, looks like this. This is a variegated euonymus. Some have uh, uh, green and white uh, <clears throat> leaves. Others are just totally green. And uh, what we're looking for here is Euonymus scale. Scale is an insect, and you can see uh, what they look like if you look on the underside of the leaves. And, and now's the time, if you, if you have a, a very large infestation of scale from last year, the best thing to do is to prune the, the shrub back severely so that you re remove the scale, and then start spraying with an insecticide such as malathion. And here's another uh, close-up of the scale. <clears throat> I always get these backwards. The uh, the 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 white, uh, I believe, is is the is the male scale, and the the darker one is the female. But it could be vice versa there. But you get two different uh, uh, sexes uh, on the on the leaf here. The point is, is when these scales, uh, these adult scales, uh, have a, a, a kind of a waxy coating on them, which makes it difficult for insecticides to penetrate. So, uh, but when the adults, uh, when the adult females uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, make new scales, they, these are called the crawlers. The crawlers that come out from the underside of the female uh, body are very susceptible to insecticides. So that's why you, you need to start control now, especially if you've been bothered by, by these in the past. And this is actually what they can do to a euonymus shrub. They can really, what, what the scale does is suck the sap out of the leaves, the leaves fall, and they, can, they actually attach themselves to the stems as well, and they can really make a, a shrub go downhill in a hurry. And and then what 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 do you use for control on them? Malathion. Malathion. Malathion okay. uh, is uh, would would be good. So that's and that's on the euonymus. Euonymus, yeah. Euronymous. That unfortunately that what that one has never been given a common name. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's still uh, euonymus. Uh, this is uh, and this the insect is euonymus scale. Okay. Oh, right, we're going to get a word on for our pride foods, make us of our pride premium pimento cheese spread and dip. And we'll be back to wrap up the Gardner's Corner program for this Friday. But right now, let's enjoy some Our Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip. Our Pride Foods, makers of Our Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip, is made in Roxboro. Whether you're having a family gathering or would just like a snack for yourself, be sure to keep plenty of Our Pride Premium Pimento Cheese spread and dip on hand. Goodness grows in North Carolina. Our Pride Foods, makers of Our Pride Premium Pimento Cheese, is available at T.G. Brooks Company, Hurdle Mills Market and Butcher Shop, North Main IGA, Twins Meat Market. Just Save, and Food Line Stores. Also, if you're in Uptown Roxburgh and get the hankering for some Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese, you can enjoy it at Cole's Pharmacy and Trish's Espresso. That's Owl Pride Foods, makers of Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip. Try the jalapeno added for extra flavor. Goodness grows in North Carolina and our pride foods makers of our pride premium pimento cheese spread and dip is located in Roxboro. Ready? Yeah. Here we are back on the Gardener's Corner program getting ready to wrap up the show today. Uh, Mr. Carl, any closing comments? Yeah, I think uh, the best thing for people to do in the landscape is to get out and scout for bagworms in the uh, in your ornamental plants, uh, your Leland cypress, your your junipers, uh, and look for the larvae which will camouflage themselves in the green needles. Uh, you f if you find the larvae, just stand still and the branch appear will appear as they're moving. Then spray with uh, seven malathion Bt so that the insecticides will be effective in preventing these insects from making, a b making the bags. Okay. Well, we hope that you found the show uh, 
full of information and hopefully you'll be able to use some of it. And uh, again, we would like to invite you to tune in to RadioRoxburgh.com to check out the Gardener's Corner program. We look forward to seeing you next week on the Gardener's Corner program. We appreciate our sponsors. They were at Red, White, and Bluegrass Festival, Sandaline Golf Cars, T.G. Brooks Company, South Boston Memorials, and Our Pride Foods, makers of Our Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip. God bless, folks. Have a wonderful and safe week, and we look forward to the next edition of the Gardener's Corner Program. <laughs> fees, no annual fees, just quick access to up to 200.